What's up traders? This is Ferris with Trade with Techs, and finally we are continuing the Learn to Trade YouTube video series. Specifically, we're talking about candlesticks today. Uh, it's my first video in a while, so I wanted the comeback video to be a good one. We will talk about the ins and outs, basically how to spot buying and selling pressure, as well as my two top candlestick trading patterns that I use daily. Okay, so if you're a day trader, swing trader, doesn't matter. I'll show you how to apply it to both. Uh, and if you want to learn more, visit the tradebitex.com website. We offer a free week in the chat where you can learn about these things live with webinars twice a week, as well as live trade alerts. Okay, but let's jump into it. So this is a Microsoft chart. Uh, we are also going to talk about Bitcoin so you can see that this applies to anything. And we're going to look at larger time frames. So right now we're on the weekly. Basically, the further you go up, the larger the move that you're looking for. If you are swing trading, ideally you want to use the daily, weekly, or monthly time frames. If you are day trading, I think the 15 minute is a good starting point it's based off your own trading style, but you want to use those time frames to spot candlestick patterns and then move up. So if you want to just simplify, just double whatever that first time frame is. So daily, you can use the two day, weekly, you can use the two week if you want. 15 to 30 to one hour, okay? Now, we're gonna be using the weekly, which means that we're looking at swing trade setups. And just to show you the basics of how this works, here's a Microsoft chart and a downward trend, right? I know, pretty intense stuff. Um, but basically with this downtrend, you wanna spot an entry point on the short side so that you're going with the trend and you're playing a sufficient risk to reward scenario, right? Reversal strategies short term are great because you're able to capture bigger moves without that much risk. So for Microsoft, you can see that where we have turned around recently, right here and right here, there isn't a lot to take away from at a glance. But if you understand candlestick patterns, you can see that this is a significant candlestick pattern and this one is as well. The whole idea is that if you're able to spot a supply and demand zone, supply being sell pressure, demand being buying pressure, and you spot a candlestick pattern with it, you have a trade for a bigger move. So for example, I'll draw these out beforehand and then I'll show you how to draw them. This is the demand zone. This is the supply zone. Okay. And we have a reversal candlestick pattern right here. That's one of the ones we're talking about. It's called the shooting star. All right. And based off of that, you could have taken a short trade down to the demand zone. So for Microsoft, that's about $15, $20 per share. If you trade options, you know how big of a deal that is. If you don't, it doesn't matter. That's still 10%. And that's a lot to make uh, on a large cap stock. So in order to spot this setup, again, you need two components, supply and demand and candlestick pattern. So let's talk about supply and demand first. Here's a simple diagram showing the basics of candlesticks. And you can see that if it's a green candlestick, the close is at the upper end of the body. The open is at the lower end of the body. That's part one. Uh, part two is just understanding that the shadows aren't always significant, but they tell you where the fight went to, right? So the highest point, that shows us the upper shadow. The lowest point, that shows us the lower shadow. The bigger the lower shadow on a green candle, the more significant, because that tells us that there was more buying pressure. On a red candle, it's just the opposite. The bigger the lower shadow is, sorry, excuse me, the bigger the upper shadow is, and the lower the closing price, the more bearish, right? So if you understand that concept, you already can tell that most of the candlesticks on a chart are BS, they, they don't matter. Um, they're nonsense, they're fugazi. They basically are telling you that there is a whole lot of noise on the chart, and you need to sift through and spot which ones are significant. So again, if it's a green candle, you want either a bigger lower shadow and a higher close, right? The close just needs to be above a key level, right? So it needs to either be breaking out or reclaiming support. And for a bearish candle, you want the close below a key level with a bigger upper shadow, okay? That's a significant candlestick. So if you can just read green or red and the shadows, you're already able to interpret where the buying and selling pressure is. Hopefully you're not colorblind, but uh, you know it's a simple process. So using what we know, if you look at this diagram here, you'll see that there are a bunch of different candlestick patterns that you can use day in and day out. Um, the bigger the lower shadow on a green candle, the more bullish. So you can see that this pattern right here is very bullish. That's a hammer for those of you that are familiar with it. And this right here is very bearish. That's a shooting star. That's one of the ones we're gonna talk about. So 
understanding this tells you where the noise is, right? If we have a normal bullish or a normal bearish candle, chances are it's not that significant. But for reversals, if we have something like this or like this, that tells us that buyers and sellers dominated, right? And that they're taking back control. So bulls have won that fight and they're reversing it back up or vice versa, okay? Easy enough. So based off of that, right? And again, if you're new, you need to go back over that. Feel free to pause it, change the playback speed, whatever. Uh, but based off of that alone, we can look at this Microsoft chart and spot a big trade opportunity. It's easy. It's very easy. You just take the highest closing price and stretch it up to the highest price. That's your supply zone. That's where the sellers are sitting. So based off this action right here, the recent movement, you can see that we have, and I'll put this in red because it's a supply zone. This is the highest closing price. And up until this point, this was actually the highest point, right, on this chart. That's the furthest Microsoft had gone. So we could stretch this over. That's the supply zone, okay? Now for demand, we'll put it in green, we could take the lowest close to the lowest price. That's right here, and then we stretch it on over. That right there tells us that this is where buyers are sitting, okay? And that this is where sellers are sitting for the current movement. So your optimal trade setup is to get in with a strong reclaim of the demand zone or a very weak reclaim of the supply zone, right? Demand being buy side, supply being sell side. So as you can see, with this movement, we can delete all this nonsense, that this right here was the first significant candlestick. Because what that tells us is that sellers are stepping in, right? We have a very low closing price relative to the key level. And we have this huge upper shadow um, on that chart. So the takeaway here for Microsoft is that based off this supply and demand structure, whoops, accidentally deleted that. I'll redraw it real quick. Based off this structure, there have been two trade opportunities. The first one is right here because it gave back the key level with a big upper shadow. The second one is right here where we technically closed back above the level, but this obviously is not a very strong or very weak candle. It's just a neutral one, right? It's just a bearish continuation. So the opportunity here on this chart is right here. That move back down because the idea, remember I said bigger move, the idea is that you are taking this trade for a bigger move back down to the demand zone, all the way back down. So instead of just nailing a two to four to 5% move, you're able to get you know, 10, 20% with some penny stocks, even 40 or 50% over the course of a few weeks, okay? If you're day trading, you're able to get a bigger gain over the course of a few hours, all right? It takes a lot of patience, it really tests it, but you'll see what I mean. So this is the first example. This right here is called a shooting star. And the components of a shooting star are pretty simple, right? We just have a lower close, so a smaller body to this move, okay? That means the distance between the open and close is not all that large, and a bigger upper shadow. So really on a chart, you're looking for a bigger upper shadow and a close below a key level. That's it. Um, if you're able to spot that, you can nail a bigger move. Now, this is where it gets complicated. And some of you guys might be lost because you use volume in a different way. But the higher the volume, the more probable a reversal, okay? Meaning from a relative standpoint. So down here, I have my volume set, right? And I have a moving average set to it. If you want to, this is a, a neat little trick, but you can add a study to your chart in Thinkorswim. I'm sure you can add it with most platforms too, called volume average. Okay, you can see it written out down here. And what that does is that it allows you to add volume to your chart with a simple moving average. So if I just add a 20 SMA, that simple moving average to this volume, right? Then I'm able to see when volume is higher than usual, right? When it's relatively high. So if you look at this recent action, again, this is the big circle that I made earlier, same movement here. Look at where there's high volume, right? Here on earnings and here on the shooting star. Is that a coincidence? Hell no. It's coming right off the resistance zone and we're seeing a big upper shadow telling us that bears knocked this back down and bulls have no chance short term, okay? So based off these two high volume instances, 
that was your first opportunity. There's really not too much to work with there. Honestly, that's not really that significant of a pattern. Um, and then this was your second one, sticks out like a sore thumb, okay? If you wanna add it to your chart, just go to studies, edit studies, and you could type in volume average, it's volume AVG, okay? Double click it, and then just keep the moving average at 20. That's it. Uh, you can put it 21, 30, I don't care, whatever you're comfortable with, and you'll be able to spot relative volume a lot more easily because when that bar exceeds the line, you got something significant, okay? Now, let me show you an easier uh, trade example, not as blatantly obvious to spot, but using the patterns that we're talking about. So the first one is a shooting star. And again, a shooting star just looks like this, as a reminder, it's just this guy right here. And you can have a little tail to that, a little lower shadow as well. As long as that lower shadow isn't too big, you're good. Uh, you just want the upper shadow to be big and then a smaller body to the candle, okay? The other one we're talking about is a hammer, which most of you are already probably familiar with a hammer. It's just the inverse. Uh, but the hammer candlestick formation is significant if it's off of a demand zone. That's something that for some reason, it goes in one ear and goes out the other for most traders where they see a hammer and they go, there it is, that's the trade opportunity, but that's not it. Um, that's not it whatsoever. You need to have both things, demand and the hammer, okay? So here's a Bitcoin chart. We're just gonna look at Bitcoin futures. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in onto some older action that just shows us where there was some opportunity, okay? Now, if you look at this movement, for Bitcoin, right? We're looking at the weekly time frame again. Let's look at this specifically, where we don't have too much movement, but we got some opportunity. Based off of the supply and demand zones, short term, and more specifically, we're looking at this, okay? Based off supply and demand, you can see that for the lowest closing price, which is right here, because remember on the red candles, the closing price is the lower end of the body right? Green, it's the opposite. So this is the lowest close. We can stretch it down to the lowest price, which was on the following candle, and then just drag that over, okay? You could also use the little box tool on Thinkorswim too. It's up here if you want. There's a box that you can draw, so you could draw it yourself if you don't have a screen annotation tool. That shows us the buying pressure, right? And then above, we have this is the highest closing price, okay? and we could stretch that, stretch that over to the highest price and take it all the way to the end, okay? Now, what this tells us is that Bitcoin is in a tight range. However, this is still a lot of money to be made. That's the idea, is that you're using boring trade setups to find opportunity in any market. So for Bitcoin specifically, here's the demand, here's the supply, buying, selling, right? Your candlestick patterns that you're looking at are a shooting star and a hammer. There is not a shooting star example. There's a close one. This is probably the closest we got to it right here, right, that red candle, but the body's too large relative to the upper shadow. You want it to be a huge upper shadow and then a smaller body, okay? For the hammer, this is as close as we're getting to a hammer. This is a almost perfect candlestick, right? Where we have elevated volume, you can see it. See how it's above the average line? It's very tricky, you can almost miss this if you're not looking too closely. And we have the bigger lower shadow, that big lower wick with a strong close. We're closing above the support. So if you can check those two boxes, number one being supply and demand, right? You're closing above the demand zone or below a supply zone, check. And you have the pattern itself, which is a hammer or a shooting star, check. Then you know when there's opportunity. You're not just throwing a dart and getting stopped out half the time right? You know when to capitalize. And the best part is we can play this back up to the supply zone, right? So for the hammer, your entry is just as soon as we get back in above that high, right? As soon as the next candle rotates up, we push back through that hammer's high. That's when you're in, you're going to the supply zone. So for Bitcoin, the move that you're capturing here is this, right there, hammer to supply zone. If you're right, if you were timing these reversal candlesticks correctly, you have one to two candles. That's it. So if I'm on the weekly time frame, it should happen within one to two weeks. Okay. This is significant for those of you that trade options, because if you trade options, you don't know what expiration to pick. You don't know how long it's going to take to get there. One to two weeks. If you are wrong, if it has not moved in one to two weeks, that means you need to exit the trade. 
you can't just stay in it. It means you read the chart wrong, something's going on that you're not seeing, you're on the wrong time frame. exit the trade, okay? But it should happen within one to two weeks. Next candle, one week away, bam, immediately, Bitcoin gets to the upper target, okay? It's simple, you don't need to nail the top, you don't need to nail the bottom, all you need to look for are supply and demand zones and these two candlestick patterns. That's it, okay? So again, just to recap this one last time, to spot a significant candlestick pattern, you need to have it green or red with a big upper or lower shadow. If it's green, the bigger the lower shadow, the better. If it's red, the bigger the upper shadow, the better, okay? And you want that opening and closing price, sorry, specifically the closing price back above or below the key level. Okay, so you need to spot the supply and demand and the candlestick pattern, and then you have a trade. Simple as that, all right? Showed you how to get about 5,000 bucks on, well, actually, no, that's closer to eight, on Bitcoin, right? Granted, it's fallen a lot since then, and showed you how to spot 10 to 20% on Microsoft. You can use them for pennies, options, futures, whatever, but that's how I use them, all right? So, hope you learned something. Again, if you want to, check out the tradewithtext.com chat. We have these webinars all the time. Uh, and again, use these candlesticks. All right, they work. So good luck. Have a good rest of your day and happy trading, folks. Take it easy.